Hey guys, this is Master Chief, Spartan 117. Today, Spartan Jess is going to teach you how to build your own airsoft needler. And don't forget, call your hits. Chief, out. Why, thanks for stopping by, Chief. I really appreciate it. Now, getting into the tutorial, I would like to state that this video, without a doubt, would not be possible without my friend Ryan, the guy who invented this conversion. Ever since I watched the Swamp Sniper's video about Ryan's custom guns, I just had to try to contact him. And eventually, well, I did. I just talked to him about my interest in creating a tutorial video about the Needler and whatnot, and at the end of the day, he was more than happy to teach me how to build the Airsoft Needler. And in doing so, he's technically the one teaching you guys. So make sure to show him thanks by following his Instagram. I'm sure he'll really appreciate it. So without further ado, Let's combine the Boomco Needler with the Airsoft ARP-9. So just take a screwdriver, just pry it off just a little bit. These connectors are made to be taken on and off. Just like that. You could keep this on if you want. It'll be easier to put on these uh, needles they could get on Etsy. Just glue it onto this area right here. It holds on just right because from what I assume, this little gray plastic pieces over here are attached or are the same piece as this whole plastic piece right here that holds the electronics. Now let's move on to disassembling the rest of the needler. That is a lot of screws. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can take it apart real quick. And this is the internals of the Boomco Needler. Mm. Oh wow, it was that easy to take out. I love it when things are simple. It really depends on this other piece to hold everything else together. Let's see if that comes out. Yep, and just like that, the bottom piece, it'll be taken off easily. Expect to feel, I guess, a little bit of grease or something while taking all these little pieces apart. Maybe have a napkin on you to wipe your hands if you need to. I could have just probably dumped it out as an easier solution. Yeah, so it turns out the two front teeth are actually separate pieces as well. Now let's move on to the bottom piece. This is gonna be our future magazine. What our plans are for the magazine, we're gonna be putting a mid cap and we're gonna be combining it with a height cap at the bottom, but we'll get into that later. Take off the barrel of the ARP-9. The flash hider is optional if you guys wanna take it off because I know how some areas are a little strict about yellow flash hiders on the barrel and whatnot. I'm gonna be taking mine off and uh, we're also gonna be taking this whole entire buttstock off. So let's get into it. A lot of you guys know that this piece right here is the toughest thing to take apart on this whole gun. So what I'm doing, I do not care about these sights at all. So one of my ideas, and you can see I've already attempted it a little bit, I'm gonna use this and take a hammer and just beat that bad boy out. And since it's attached to the rail, it's eventually gonna pop off. Just like that. After taking that part of the ARP-9 off, now we're gonna be taking off the flash hider. This step's pretty easy. We just hold this button down and take the whole extension off, just like that. Then we take this little button area off, just push down on this button, and that reveals the wiring to your battery. It includes a MOSFET, and I think it includes something that activates a three round burst for the gun. Just take it out gently, and all the way at the bottom there, you can see a Phillips head screw. So what we're gonna be doing is unscrewing that, and this whole piece right here is gonna come off. We got the battery wire out of the whole entire bud stock. This is where I got the Phillips head screwed out of the gun back here. It's supposed to uh, connect to the gearbox from what I understand. Make sure to be careful whenever you're taking the wiring out. So now that we took apart the whole entire butt stock and the barrel area, Make sure to put your screw they just took out of the, the buttstock 
put it back into the screw hole it came from because we're going to be using it later. This is going to be what we use for the needler conversion. We don't need the buttstock and we don't need this at all. For a third step of this process is that I'm going to be dremeling the interior of the Bunko needler. I plan on keeping the power source for the lights that light up the needles on the top of the needler. Uh, you guys can remove it if you want, but I'm going to be keeping mine. But at the moment, I'm going to be taking them out so I don't damage the AA battery carrier while I'm dremeling the interior of this. So for the sake of this project, don't dremel these supports right here because that's what's going to hold your power supply for the lights that illuminate the needles on top of the needle. Alright, so one thing I would really like to note is the fact that this stupid bottom piece is probably the hardest thing to take apart out of this whole conversion, without a doubt. It's definitely harder than the barrel of the ARP-9. The reason being is because there's a couple of uh, attachments inside that aren't really even necessary. Kind of like the attachments that uh, keep the screws in place on the inside. They're kind of like cylinder shape. So what I did is I dremeled around here a little bit and I also dremeled a little bit right here as well. Another thing to keep in mind is that there's two different kinds of plastic on here. The regular kind of plastic that comes with the Boomco needler, which is this dark blue, and this brighter blue. It's more of like a rubbery plastic. So I think that's what's also making sure that these two pieces are stuck together because this rubbery plastic is kind of like hell bent on staying together. So that's why I'm also dremeling down here as well. did it. God. As I was saying, these are the unnecessary little supports. Now look at all of that. I literally dremeled the entire bottom and almost the entire top as well. This conversion. Good God. That, that was aggravating. But we did it, nevertheless. If I could do it, you can too. So in order for us to stabilize your airsoft gun into the needler shell, which is now the dremeled interior of the Boomco needler, you're going to need a block of wood with these specific measurements. So after creating our block of wood, try to place the block of wood on the barrel of your ARP-9. Just uh, see where you want it, adjust accordingly whenever putting it in here. So whenever you place it here, make sure that the block of wood is straight. And we're also gonna need to pre-drill two holes on this little, I guess we could say tooth right here of the needler and we'll do two more pre-drilled holes on the other side. That will give us lead way for our screws to go into the block of wood and into the plastic and hold our block of wood between the two plastic pieces. Now before we put our ARP-9 into the Boomco shell, I made sure to put the two needler teeth right up here, back into the shell. And I also made sure to put back the power supply that illuminates the needles on top of the needler. Now, whenever you put back the power supply into the shell, make sure the green wires are hooked up underneath the power supply. Before pre-drilling your holes up here on the teeth of the needler, I got this piece of metal or aluminum at your local Lowe's or hardware store, and I made sure to bend at least this side of the aluminum with a hammer just to get that shape that I wanted. Now, what this is going to do is further stabilize your ARP-9 into the Boomco shell by attaching to where we took out that screw at the back of the gearbox, and it'll be on the side of your needler. We marked our two holes using the uh, metal piece. I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill these. A very cheap solution, which is actually kind of free. I got a paint stick, snapped it in half, and now I have these two parts. Put them together, so whenever the screws go in, they'll latch onto that paint stick. So after getting your paint stick wood glued together like I did. Make sure to put it on a flat surface that you're comfortable with uh, having screws going through them just in case if they do. And get our aluminum or metal piece right here. And then we're gonna take two three quarters of an inch screws and drilling them into the needler. 
So after getting those screws in, my three quarters of an inch screws are a little bit too long for the two paint sticks. If your screws are poking out of the paint sticks a little bit, just snip them off. Also, um, my paint stick right here split a little bit, but the other paint stick did not. So whenever you're screwing in these screws, just make sure you're very gentle screwing them in and don't put too much pressure. Otherwise, you'll split the paint stick super easily. Now that we're done screwing in the aluminum or metal piece into the Boomco shell, I decided to put the UAR in and put the other side of the Boomco shell on as well. And as you can tell, this is pretty well stabilized just because of this metal piece. And we haven't even uh, put in our screws into the top of the teeth yet. So I recommend putting in your aluminum or metal piece onto your UAR and the needler first before doing your screws on the front end over here. That way you'll have a guaranteed area to where you know the screws will be going in. Just so you guys know, the two paint sticks was fighting me a little bit. That's without a doubt. That's why I put in these screws up here just to hold the needler in place while I do my work. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill the holes into the wood piece up here. And I'm going to be careful when I do so, so I don't try to hit the barrel of my gun. So just go into the piece of wood gently and then come back out. You do not want to split this piece of wood. Trust me, I learned the hard way. If that ever happens, just get some really strong wood glue, clamp it back together and try again. And if you're not comfortable with that, just make a new block of wood. I took this piece off because this was further making it a little bit harder for the shell to stay on. So that just freed up a little bit of space and it didn't mess with any of the functionality whenever I was checking the gun and whatnot. So that's good. Now, if you guys don't like the exposed wire look, you could always cover it up if you want. My friend Ryan, the guy who invented this conversion, he used a wire cover. He put it back here and he weaved the wires through that tube and up here. But in his part of the conversion, he didn't use the uh, power supply for the illuminating needles. So that's why I decided to weave my battery cord up into the gun one because there's a lot of space in there as it is and two because i think it looks pretty good and i don't want to do a lot more work installing this hose that's going to fight me trying to install it into this needler and plus i don't really mind the exposed wire look i don't think a bb is going to be hitting over here anytime soon but i do plan on covering this the back of the gearbox and the wiring coming from it and then eventually I was able to get my MOSFET up here and up top, this is where we're gonna put our battery. This top cap right here is gonna be placed on smoothly, just like that. And I honestly think you could probably keep it on without screwing it for gameplay purposes. For a fast battery replacement, you just easily snug it off, take it off, and boom, you get access to your battery. Now, Granted, whenever you do that, it might not be as free and open like mine is because whenever we're done with the conversion, I'm gonna plug this cord back into the power supply over here. So one of the final steps of completing this needler airsoft conversion is by trying to make the bottom part of the Boomco needler into a combination of a mid cap and a high cap. And the way that we're doing that is we're gonna be cutting our mid cap and high cap ARP9 magazines and combining the high cap part with a PVC tubing of one inch in diameter. All of your BBs are going to be held in the PVC tubing and the high cap and with it wounded up in the back it's going to feed the BBs through the tube and up into your mid cap magazine. We have to fit all that inside of the bottom part of our needler and as you can tell I've already took the steps to Dremel this out a little bit more because the gun's magwell could fit into this bottom part of the needler. Also, I forgot to mention that you're going to have to Dremel the bottom part of your needler grip piece. Reason being is this is where the high cap part of your magazine is gonna go and sit. So whenever you want to wind up your mag, this is where you get to wind up the wheel. Let's go ahead and disassemble our mid cap magazine and get it ready to be cut on the chop saw. By disassembling the Mid cap ARP9 magazine, uh, take off the screw at the bottom that holds everything in place. And once you feel it loose, this will pop out and make sure you try to get the spring out of this. And the way you do that is you unscrew these screws right here and the spring might fling out at you. So just be careful when doing this.
And there goes the spring in the ARP9 magazine, and we are not going to be needing any of this. So once you get the spring out of the mid cap of the gear magazine, you're going to have to put the two main pieces back together with the three screws holding it in place, and then put it back together in the body of the mid cap of the ARP9. We're going to count up on the side, one, two, three, four, five dots right there, and nine dots back here and we're gonna cut this magazine on a 45 degree angle. Taking my uh, mid cap to the chop saw. The reason why I did it with a chop saw is to just get that perfect and precise cut that I wanted. And also I cut these separately, so I didn't cut the internals and the shell of this magazine together. I probably could have, but just to be more safe, I took this out, cut that, and then I cut the shell of the magazine. And also whenever you're doing this cut, the middle screw of the mid cap. I'd suggest taking that off just in case if your chop saw, it'll be hitting right in the middle of that screw. Our next step is trying to figure out how we're gonna place our now cut PVC tubing into here. And the way that we're gonna feed BBs into it is we're, we're gonna take off the top part of the high cap magazine, cut this piece off, and we're gonna somehow attach this piece onto the top and make a hole in the PVC tubing here so whenever you go to reload or put more BBs into your needler magazine, if you open this little flap, you can feed BBs through that way. Also make sure to cut your plastic tubing to seven inches. And this is what the inside of your needler magazine should look like. I drill it up here so we could put our little entry port for our BBs to go in. And I also took our cut PVC pipe, measured about where exactly I'm gonna have it, and I dremeled accordingly to the hole. So after you have all your dremeling done, we're going to PVC glue or PVC cement our cap into our PVC pipe. So after dremeling a hole up here in our PVC pipe and attaching our cap, we're going to go ahead and try to attach the PVC pipe to our high cap magazine. And the way we're going to be doing that by using JB water weld, which is basically made for PVC and plastics. And what you're going to do is open it up, cut a piece off, mold it up a little bit, place on your epoxy stick right here, and also do it around the high cap and the PVC pipe. So the high cap and the PVC pipe will have a good connection and also cover that entrance right there. I decided to dremel the bottom part of our PVC cap. So whenever we try to put our high cap right there and we apply our epoxy, the PVC pipe and the high cap are gonna be aligned. So after letting our epoxy stick cure and dry up for an hour, we're going to Take some hot glue and glue the edge of our little BB port here and then put it right here. So after hot gluing our BB port on top of the magazine, we're going to take our tubing and try to hot glue it at the bottom of the high cap. Now the reason why we're using hot glue is if I mess up or if the BBs don't align with the tubing very well, it's easy to take off the hot glue and try again. Now before we could attach the tube to our mid cap that'll lead up to the ARP9, we need to figure out how to attach the mid cap to the needler grip. The way we're going to do that by putting our cut mid cap into our ARP9 and put it right about where you want your mag to be set. I also noticed that whenever you put the mid cap flat, it's not exactly going to be centered whenever you put the other part of the bottom grip on. So what I did is cut a piece of wood according to the size of the magazine right here. And we're going to be putting screws from the outside through the wood and through the back of the mid cap. You don't want to do it in the front because that's where your BBs are going to feed. And we're no longer using the back part of the mid cap. So that's where our screws are going to be placed. So I ended up pre-drilling two holes on this side right here. And I added two screws. And in the middle, you can see the piece of wood that I already cut out and the screws that go all the way through the wood, through the plastic and through the magazine. Now that we have all this out of the way, we're going to try to put the other half onto our new needler magazine. Now with that, it's pretty easy. Just put in the screws at the bottom right here. But one problem I'm having is that the back here isn't fully closed all the way. So what I plan on doing is getting this part to a hanger, attach it right here, and screw it in place to hold the back together. Now I'm gonna be going for the Halo Reach color design. I know a lot of people like the purple design from the original Halos, but me personally, I'm a big Halo Reach fan. And I've always loved the coloring of the Halo Reach and also the Halo 5 needler. You don't have to do this coloring if you don't want to. Customize it your own way. A metallic bronze color and a little bit of metallic silver 
Now, whenever you're going ahead and painting your magazine, make sure to cover up all the mid cap areas, all this empty space, you know, all the stuff that you don't want paint going into where your BBs will end up. Make sure to add a primer coat before you start painting as well. So now that we got our paint job finished, now the very final step, we're going to assemble our finished needler. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial video about how to create your own Halo Airsoft needler. Again, I would like to thank Ryan for teaching me how to build this conversion and in return he's technically teaching you guys how to build this needler and even though this year seems to be like a pretty bad year for a lot of people for us halo fans it's looking pretty bright especially with halo infinite coming from the horizon and who knows with the new deal with nerf that microsoft has made some of the future halo airsoft conversion possibilities could be well infinite so chief would you like to send this video out with a bang you betcha thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe and don't forget, this is truly Combat Evolved. Chief, out.